Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Tom Brady was introduced as the new quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He dodged questions, though, about what number he would wear during yesterday's conference call. But the Bucks website is now selling number 12 Brady jerseys. Tampa Bay wide receiver Chris Godwin also wears number 12, but said he'd happily give it to Brady, a six-time Super Bowl champion. Good move because you probably want to be on his good side as a receiver. Anyway, Brady shocked a lot of people leaving the Patriots after 20 seasons for the Bucks. During his conference call to promote social distancing, Brady praised his new team. There's some really talented players here on this offense that, um, you know, that have very unique skill sets. And it's really my responsibility to, you know, I have one ball and I got to be able to deliver that ball to the guy who can, who can do something with it. So, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of ground to make up because, you know, I haven't worked with, you know, these players and I'm going to have to learn what they do and, and their body language and how they like things. And, um, you know, that's part of the challenge. And, you know, it's, it's unfortunate we're going through in our world. Um, it presents different challenges for all of us. So, again, as soon as we have the opportunity to all be together in one place and we can really start working toward that, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. Sunday afternoon, we caught up with Green Bay Packers linebacker Ty Summers, the former Reagan High School quarterback turned linebacker at TCU and drafted in the seventh round by the Green Bay Packers in 2019. Ty played in all 16 games as a rookie, mainly on special teams, and finished the regular season with four total tackles. Then in the divisional round of the playoffs, he had two total tackles in the Packers win against the Seahawks. Now we spoke with Ty via FaceTime and asked him to sum up his rookie campaign. I mean, it was crazy. It was it was long. Yeah, I will say because I mean, playing. I think we played twenty two games. I think including preseason. Yeah, I want to say yeah, twenty two games. And so that was double anything that I'd ever played previously. You know, college or high school. And so that was that was one thing. But I feel like there was such a cool experience getting to go into those different stadiums, mm -hmm. thinking players that I've watched on TV. Heck, I've played with on video games, you know, all that kind of stuff, and be able to see them line up against some or um, just watch what they do, you know, as well as you be on the same team as some of those guys. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty exciting experience. With Packers starting inside, linebacker Blake Martinez leaving for the Giants. Ty will challenge for a starting position next season. The San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame induction ceremony scheduled for March 28th has been postponed until February of next year, but their online auction continues through April the 3rd to raise money for their nonprofit organization, including everything from sports memorabilia to vacations at sanantoniosports.org. $400,000 worth of items, um, all at bargain prices. So as people are sitting at home wondering what to do, uh, go to sanantoniosports.org, register for the auction, and you'll be doing a great job to help our kids in San Antonio and probably get some really, really good deals. All right, SA Live is here. It's all good. Guys, back to you at the desk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Larry. You stole our line. We're I gonna, know. Right across from me. We're starting to get used to this. Well, Larry, you know, we were Larry got the hook and, and SA Live <laughs> gets the stage. A lot of folks are making meals at home, and that's what you guys are talking about. That's, that's right. That's right. We have got a way to save you some time and make your meals last. We are teaching you the do's and don'ts of prepping freezer meals. And Erin Chase, I mean, my goodness, she's done this several times on the show, showing us the, you know, the right way to kind of go about this and making the meals for the entire week where all you got to do is just pull it out of the freezer and just kind of go. And to segue out of sports, she hits it out of the park every time. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, oh, yeah. <laughs> we like that. And we also want to know oh. what new or weird dishes have you tried in the past two weeks during social distancing? Tag us at SA Live KSET on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I know some people are doing some weird stuff. I They're mean, you, 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 yeah, you get creative. Some of the things I've seen are kind of side eye maybe. <laughs> like, I know if Mike's got some that, weird stuff. Oh, he's our favorite little <laughs> No, okay. And hey, don't fall asleep. The king of scares, Freddy Krueger himself, actor Robert England shows us his latest venture into the world of terror. Hear what he has to say about playing the iconic role and what it took to pull it off. Don't go to sleep. All right, don't have a green thumb. We got a few tips that you can use to get your garden growing strong inside of your own home. And it's something that folks have had a challenging time shopping for, hand sanitizer. So one distillery is helping out to make sure first responders have the tools they need 
to stay safe. This is really great. How cool is that? So you actually can go there as a, as a customer, and you can get some, you know, some beverages to go, but then they're also helping the first responders. Yeah. Great stuff. All that and more when SA Live. So this is a tricky question to answer, but here's what we have so far. Once a person has COVID-19, health experts aren't sure what the immunity will be. In fact, there is debate right now with some researchers who say the immune system works, while others say it all depends on the severity of your illness. The bottom line is that it's just too soon to tell because the virus is too new. Right now, anyone who hasn't been exposed has no antibodies against it. If you have a question, you could still submit it on our website. And if you want to sign up for the SAQ newsletter, you could do so by going to ksat.com slash newsletter. Dining rooms at local restaurants are closed during the coronavirus pandemic. However, owners around town are getting creative on what they're serving. Some even offering margaritas on the go or even gallons of mixed drinks. To find out other creative techniques, just head to ksat.com. All right, 93 degrees this afternoon. Morning clouds the next couple of days, but afternoon sun will keep things unseasonably warm. We have a dry, uh, Pacific cold front coming in early Saturday morning. A couple of showers possible there, but a nice drop in humidity and high temperatures as we get into the weekend. Early next week, more clouds and better chances of isolated showers and a few rumbles of thunder, guys. All right, looks like a good day. You might want a ice cold beverage. Ooh. 90 and sunny, loving it, smiling from ear to ear. Well, that is it for us right here for the news at noon. But don't worry, we have a lot coming up in just about eight seconds. SA Live starts right now. Make your meals last. We're teaching you the do's and don'ts of prepping freezer meals. I got to get one of those gallon mixed drink things. Plus, it's a great time to give extra love to your leaf babies. I've got some extra handy tips that you can get your garden in gear. And don't fall asleep. The King of Scares, actor Robert Englund, Freddy Krueger himself, shows us his latest venture into the world of terror. SA Live starts now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. I'm Damon Curtis, and you're watching SA Live. Happy Musical Wednesday. He's sharing his talent during tough times, a performance by Damon Curtis a little later on in the show. I'm David Elder, in for Mike Osterhage. And I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, social distancing has us all trying new things, like us here in the news studio, and a lot of us are trying new dishes, sometimes weird dishes. <laughs> so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna check in right now with Mike Osterhage, you know, who, and see what's kind of new and, and weird in his world. You know he's got a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something I've talked about before on the air, and this is, uh, it's peanut butter, mayonnaise, and onion, yes, in a sandwich. Okay, this is something, and I just called my mom and dad, who well, should be visiting right now, and they said that when they were in college and used to get together for a date, they'd go to a little Greasy Spoon restaurant, and this was the delicacy that they did. Must be something right, because they're both in their 90s, and they've been married going on 70 years. So here it is, peanut butter, mayonnaise, and onion. And I know it sounds weird, but the little bit of sweetness from the mayonnaise, the, the peanut butter in there to, to soothe all out and that tang from the onion, it's actually very good. I challenge you both to give it a try. I think you'll like this. What are you chasing that with? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully some of those carry on margaritas. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, we are going to check in with you again later, uh, later, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, you who know. knows? Yeah, we'll see. We always okay. got to see what he's doing yes. over there. All right, so we want to know what new or weird dishes have you tried these past two weeks during social distancing? Tag us at SA Live KSAT. And we'll try and share some of those a little later on in the show. We might side eye some of them. <laughs> yeah, we'll if they're like anyway. that, we might look at you a little <laughs> weird, but it's okay. Share us. All right, like we said, we're all making more food at home. So what's your favorite homemade meal? That's right. We want to know what you're making, what's going in the freezer, what's going on with that as well. Yeah. But, you know, don't just start shoving food in the freezer right away. Yeah. We actually have a really cool technique for you guys. Check it out. 
Hey, I'm Erin Chase from Five Dollar Dinners and I wanna help you get through this challenging time by sharing how freezer meals work and why they're gonna be really practical and useful for you right now. We're all stuck at home. We are social distancing, we are self-quarantining, whatever you wanna call it to reduce the risk of all that's going on. We're going to be eating at home A-L-O-T. I want you to think about how you could use a freezer meal for the nights that you would have gone out for dinner with your family. So we're gonna make a beef roast with sweet potatoes and carrots. But the idea here is when you see the meat is available, get it from your store and then put it together into a set of freezer meals so you have options for those nights that you would be going out for dinner. You can make a freezer meal at home instead. It doesn't feel like cooking, it's really easy to prep and you have a meal for your family at home. So let's dive into the prep work here. What we're going to do is prep the meals to go into the freezer. So we're gonna start with the beef roast. So I'm gonna add the beef roast that I got from the store right into the freezer meal bag. This is actually two roasts it looks like. So we'll put it into two bags and we will add, get the ingredients ready to go and then add them in with the roast. I love these freezer meal bag holders to hold the bags open so we don't make a mess all over the kitchen counter and we do have these available in our online store. So next in our ingredient prep is going to be to peel and quarter these sweet potatoes. So I'm just gonna do that here. And then after that we will do the same with the carrots, peel and Definitely do not want to peel these into your sink because potato peels in the sink is not a good combination. They will get in a big fight with your disposal. On our freezer cooking website, we have a thousand recipes that work in this sort of prep um, ingredients in load bag sort of format that we're gonna go over here. So yeah, there's a lot of them and I'm really particular about the type of recipe that I include. I need it to be fast to prep and really fast to cook. So it really, we hear from so many people that it just it doesn't feel like cooking. It's more like, it might be cooking, but it's more like reheating or, you know, letting the slow cooker or the instant pot, you know, in the case of the honey mustard chicken that we'll get to, even this beef roast, they're gonna cook it for you. So it doesn't really feel like you're doing anything and you have this great meal ready to go. Peeling is done. So next, let's do the carrots. We're gonna just lop off the ends. And then I, because I'll probably slow cook this, I'll probably just leave them in big chunks like this. So we'll just leave them like that. It's fast and easy. And then these are going right into both of these um, bags. Once you're done chopping, you can just do that. One tip is leave your carrots in big chunks, especially if you're going to slow cook them. And really the same goes for the sweet potatoes. Because we're slow cooking them, we can just kind of run our knife through a couple times. You don't need to cut them down too small because they're gonna cook really nicely in the slow cooker with the rest of these ingredients. Just into big chunks like this. And again, we'll divide these evenly among the two meals that we have that we're making here. And last for this one, see how fast and easy that is. We're just gonna add some seasoning. This is just a seasoning blend. Pretty much any seasoning blend that's gonna work with meat and sweet potatoes, whatever your favorite seasoning blend is, you go ahead and use that. And then when we are ready, everything's loaded in. You're going to take it out from the bag holder, kind of roll it and seal it. There we go. Just kind of press the air out. These don't last all that long in my freezer, but if you're using you know, a freezer where you're gonna leave it in there for like you know, a year, um, you're gonna want to maybe use a vacuum seal, but that doesn't happen around here, so I just get as much air out as I can, and then try and flatten it into the smallest you can. Roasts are a little bit harder to flatten um, because the meat is thicker. I will show you with the chicken how easy it is to flat freeze a freezer meal. This one's a lot trickier because it's thicker. 
So when it's time to put these in the freezer, because these two are thicker and about the same um, height, we can sort of roll them together and together they will make one layer and then we'll add the chicken meals onto the top here in just a couple of minutes and then we'll put this whole sort of like almost Tetris style situation of our meals into the freezer. When prepping a roast like this for the freezer, whether it's just the roast and a sauce and seasoning or roast and veggies like this, you're probably gonna wanna add about a tablespoon of seasoning per pound of the roast. And I think that would work really well for both a beef roast or a pork roast. And that is how I would put together some extra beef roast that I find available at the grocery store into the freezer so we have some really great freezer meal options down the line. You can get this recipe and many others on my freezer cooking website, myfreezeeasy.com. You know, tomorrow, Erin is going to show us an easy way to fancy up your chicken dinner with exciting new flavors. You don't want to miss it. I want to see how she flattens it. I was going to say, I got to see how she goes to flatten that chicken out. <laughs> I'm intrigued. That's right. And we've been thinking out of the box for meals at home, but businesses are also thinking out of the box. With shortages on important things like hand sanitizer, one distillery is shifting gears to make sure first responders have the tools they need to stay safe. Once South by Southwest was canceled, the team, we were kind of trying to figure out what was going to be happening at Desert Door for the next few months. And so we kind of just turned our attention to figuring out like how might we go about helping during this time. Um, so we started thinking of different ways and hand sanitizer jumped to first of mind when you saw the, you know, the run on the product and the shortage that was happening out there. Well, we believe that this was an opportunity to actually be a good community partner. This is our civic responsibility, and this was our way to actually provide some relief, some comfort to those first responders, those people that are out there on the front lines and that don't have the luxury of self-quarantining. So we were first approached uh, early on by San Antonio Police Department, um, then Corpus Christi Police Department, Austin Police Department, Houston, and now we're up to well over a dozen um, police departments where we have provided hand sanitizer for almost their entire police force. Not to mention the FBI as well, uh, Texas Parks and wildlife, a couple of local hospitals, the city of uh, Austin, we've provided 110 gallons of hand sanitizer to. Um, the great thing is, is we set out to do about 750 gallons this week and provided out and we did all that. Still ahead on SA Live, avoiding illness starts with your immune system. We've got natural ways to give you a boost. But first, don't have a green thumb? That's okay, we got a few tips that you can use right at home in your garden growing and get it growing strong. That's next on SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, David, you always know where to chow down and find that good food, but now you're digging into some gardening. That's right. I it's actually, time. this is <laughs> something people don't really know about me. I love the outdoor gardening. I love doing the indoor plant deal. This is actually a shot from my little sanctuary in my look house right there. You. Yeah, don't worry about that pillow right there, but look at this. This is, all, <laughs> this is my little sanctuary of, of just happiness and fun energy right there. Look at that. Do That's you pretty, right? To them? I talk to them. talk to them. Yeah, I regularly talk to them. And look, we're going to get into this. What I want people to know, though, is the orchids can be challenging. They can be a little bit difficult, right? A lot of people feel very intimidated when you get one. They just kind of like toss it off to the side and let it die. But I have some really great tips to help get your indoor garden in gear. Everybody knows I love restaurants. Everybody knows I love food and supporting the restaurant community. But one thing people don't really know about me, I love houseplants. One of the most important things I have found about houseplants is you have to find the perfect place in your house for them. What I have found is that the southernmost part of your house, so the house facing the south, right, is gonna give you some really nice light. I have a little cover right here on the outside of my house. This is the front of the house. So the front of my house is facing the south, okay? Make sure you have some blinds of some sort, something to filter the light and your house plants will excel in that location. These orchids right here, I've had them through the cycle. So they've actually lost their flowers and get this, 
I got them to re-bloom. This one right here is still in its first blooming cycle that we've had since I got it. Check this out. This orchid is about to re-bloom right now. This one is opening up. Look at that, it's gonna be so beautiful. This one too over here, this is like little baby version of it. Down here on the base of the orchid, you can see there are some roots. These guys look kind of scraggly, but they're working and the plant is very happy. Now, the roots usually have like a rounded tip to them, a rounded edge, like check out this one, look at that. See that, it has like a little rounded edge on it and it comes out near the base. Watering your plants on a consistent cycle is just as important as finding a place in your house that has good sunlight. What I like to do is find a day of the week, my day is a Wednesday, so actually today will be the day. You come in, each orchid only needs about a quarter of a cup of water a week. That's it, don't overwater them. I think that's a big problem people have with orchids is overwatering. Everything else, I load it up. I mean, <laughs> everything else gets a lot of water. I like to soak the plants, the other ones, with water until you see the water get reabsorbed back into the plant and they really enjoy having a lot of water. Orchids do not like a lot of water. Every six months you gotta get some orchid food and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so this packet right here says every 12 months. Don't listen to that. Do it every six months. I promise you, you're gonna see results a lot faster. But this right here, you add it into some water, it has the directions on the back, you pour it into your plants. It's really simple, but it boosts your orchids up and makes them look absolutely gorgeous. This one right here, it's called Crystal. I don't know, that's the name of the product right there. This is the one that I like to use. It's worked very well and you can find it at your local grocery stores, plant shops, things like that. This is the one to use. I absolutely love it, you guys. I'm so glad that you got to take a little tour of my house over here. This is my favorite spot to be in when I'm not around my kid or my wife, right? When you get to just think of nothing and look over here at your plants. Thank you so much for joining me on a quick little tour of my house plant area in my house. Uh, I'd like to see what you guys have at your house as well. So message us on here at SA Live KSAT on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Let us know what you guys have going on in your house. I know it's a great way for me to just relax and um, enjoy the product. Like this is, this is great. It's fun to look at. Look how beautiful this is. Let's get stuff. All right, still ahead. I mean, orchids may be scary, but this is as scary as it's gonna get, okay? Escape into a world of terror. Coming up at around 1.30, how the master of screams, the original Freddy Krueger himself, has found new ways to scare you. I'm already terrified. And next, a strong immune system is key to fighting off sickness. The simple things you can do to boost yours. That's straight ahead on SA Live. If you want to fend off a virus, there's a natural way to start by boosting your immune system. Dr. Christy Clark, president and CEO of Health Texas is on the line to give us some important pointers during this time of uncertainty. What can folks do yeah. to lower their risk of contracting COVID-19? It's really important this time to listen to our local leaders and make sure that we're all following the instructions they've, they've given us. But from, from a medical professional standpoint, from a physician standpoint, basically can think of basically three or four main things we could do. Number one, crowds. You need to avoid crowds, especially if you're sick. We know that the coronavirus can travel about six feet, we think. So it's very important to maintain social distancing. Hand washing. I think there's a lot of um, concern these days because, oh, I can't find hand sanitizer. This running out of hand sanitizer. Soap and water, plain old soap and water is so important for this. You need to wash thoroughly and wash frequently. Most people will say to, when you, uh, when you wash your hands, sing the song, happy birthday twice regularly clean surfaces. Uh, we know that the coronavirus can live on surfaces now for several hours and many types of surfaces several days. So use disinfectant wipes, keep your um, you know, phones, iPads, stairwells, banisters, uh, handles, anything you're touching, keep that really clean. Don't touch your face because the virus can also travel through mucous membranes. So make sure you're not touching your face. It can also travel in that way. And most importantly, stay calm. Don't post irresponsibly on social media. Make sure that you are just listening to the guidelines that everyone gives and do um, uh, exactly what we're all saying overall and just stay calm. I mean, we're going to get through this as a community because we're an amazing community. What are some other things we can do naturally to boost our immune systems and lower our risk? Sure. So at this point in the crisis, it's probably not uh, super easy to just boost your immune system right right then and now. But in general, there are a lot of uh, 
uh, ways we can boost our immune system in general, lean protein. So antibodies are the actual white cells that fight infection. So those are built by protein. So the more lean protein that you're eating, the, um, the stronger your antibodies will be and the stronger your response to uh, all kinds of infections, not just coronavirus, but all kinds of infections. Plenty of fruits and vegetables that gives you vitamins like vitamin A, C, and E. Minerals, zinc uh, is, is known to uh, try to help boost our immune system as too. If you don't get enough fresh fruits and vegetables, then you should also um, take a multivitamin. Uh, you know, talk to your physician about taking a multivitamin if you should. Cook with healthy oils, canola oil, uh, olive oil. These have omega-3s, less omega-6, omega-3 good, omega-6 bad, and you should cook with those. Exercise is really important and don't smoke. Those are some of the things we can always do to boost our immune system. So doctor, if someone is feeling sick and not sure if it's the flu or COVID-19, what should they do? I think that's the most common people thing people have question people have right now, Fiona, is, uh, you know, these days, any little cough we get or a sniffle, we automatically think, oh, gosh, I wonder if I've been exposed or I have coronavirus. Um, previously, before this crisis, we would all just go and book an appointment with our doctor and go in and see them. That is not what you should do. OK, right now, it's really important to try to keep our health care providers safe. It's important to preserve the protective equipment that we have. So I would urge everyone, if you do or if you are concerned, you have flu or COVID, call your physician. And the reasons for that is most physician offices across the city have now set up different protocols. They probably won't see you in their office unless they think you're truly sick or might need testing, but they are going to have telephone visits. A lot of our doctors here at Health Texas, we've been doing telephone visits the whole week. If for some reason, and your doctor can direct you, if they feel that you're someone who might have COVID symptoms and they can direct you then to where you could be tested. If they can test you at their office, they will tell you how to do that. If they can send you elsewhere for testing, they'll tell you how to do that. If right. you don't have a doctor, then you should call the Metropolitan Health District 210-207-5779 if you don't have a primary care doctor. Primary care physicians are, of course, your first line of defense. And because they know you and your medical history, Health Texas primary care doctors are ready to help at several locations around town. You can give them a call at 210-731-HTMG. That's 210-731-4864. Or visit their website, healthtexas.org. Dr. Clark, thank you so much for this important information. Uh, still ahead on SA Live, musicians are working hard to stay connected to fans. How you can hear the latest from this local band. And next, scary stories for the monster that screams. There's a new way you can have some frightening fun in your home and you don't want to miss this. Stay with us. And here are a few tips to staying healthy from BMW of San Antonio and the Tobin Center for the Performing Arts. every now and then and nothing does it quite like a scary story. Well, the master of terror, Freddy Krueger himself, actor Robert England joins us to talk about real life scary stories from across the country. Hey there. Good morning, San Antonio. <laughs> hey, so real life, uh, well, it can be scarier than fiction, right? I'll tell you right now, these are some, some strange trying times, but uh, we we shall get through this. This too shall pass. Well, this series has everything from ghosts to killers and even monsters. Tell us about one of these true monster stories. Well, you know, the one that really creeped me out the most, and I, gosh, I think it's on tonight, which uh, makes it a little too close to home right now for what we're going through, but it's about the smallpox epidemic in New Orleans and science and medicine wasn't what it is today and a combination of inferior medical practices as well as uh, corruption uh, enabled them to bury people alive uh, and there was I think the coroners and the coffin builders and the guys running the charity hearses back and forth to the graveyard to the cemetery and the grave diggers 
because they were all in cahoots and making a, you know extra money for every body they put underground. And uh, we have a buried alive segment ripped from the headlines a uh, hundred years ago, uh, <laughs> ripped from yesterday's headlines. And it's just a really creepy episode with a great, you know me, I've been under uh, prosthetics makeup for half of my career. And there's a great, great smallpox makeup in this uh, episode as well. Ooh, blisters. Now, I, I, I got to talk to you about about your career. What is the one question you get asked the most? I think it's people want to know how long the makeup takes. How long does it take <laughs> or did it take? <laughs> I'm going to get you, Fiona. Uh, no, it takes, it's about three, three and a half hours to be camera ready. Uh, but I don't brag about the Freddie makeup because my Phantom of the Opera makeup was closer to four hours. And I did a Stephen King movie called The Mangler. And that makeup was about four and a half, four and a half hours. Now back to True Terror, there's even a story involving a future president? Well, you know, I'm not a, a, a fan of the Bigfoot stuff. Uh, I remember seeing that cheesy 16 millimeter Legend of Boggy Creek movie when I was a kid at the drive-in movie. But we have an episode, a segment about Sasquatch and our source is none other than Theodore Roosevelt, the president of the United States at the time on a camping trip in Montana. So this is a Sasquatch sighting sourced by a president of the United States years and years, almost a century before we sort of got into our, our, our Bigfoot trend here in, in, in contemporary society. What was the first scary movie you saw as a kid or a young adult that really frightened you? Well, as a very small child, uh, my mother was a big James Mason fan, and I saw 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and the giant squid grabbed a sailor and lifted him up and sucked on him with his tentacles, and he had big, big welts from where the giant octopus had him. That freaked me out. Now, are you going to be freaking out anybody in the future? Any chance of you becoming Freddy one more time? I don't think I'll put that smelly sweater on again <laughs> or that old claw. But I'd love, to be, I'd love to be invited back to do a cameo if they read the franchise. Maybe I could play like the dream therapist part three <laughs> or something. I think that would be fun. Oh, uh, Robert Englund, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. Bye bye, Fiona. I'm going to make that my ringtone. Next on SA Live, we're bringing you the entertainment and we're bringing it straight to you. Catch this performance from a local band and hear how you can keep the music going when SA Live continues. Bye bye. You live in one of my favorite cities. I love that river walk. Oh, yay. Okay. Welcome back to SA Live. This is an SA Live sound session. Times have been tough lately, and that's the case for musicians too. That's right, local bands have lost pretty much all of their gigs because of the coronavirus pandemic, putting them out of a job. So a lot of them are going online now to bring their music to you. We checked in with new Braunfels musician Damon Curtis and his band to find out where you can catch a performance from your living room. So I am Damon Curtis. We're doing things a little bit different here nowadays. It's changed everything. I'm lowly. All our gigs in for like the next month, we, we pretty much lost them all. I'm tired the way things have been. Um, you know, we haven't, we haven't been able to play um, in venues. And so we're just, we just have to move everything online. We still stay in touch with uh, with a bunch of the venues and just kind of see what's going on, trying to reschedule stuff as well. And so mainly just staying in contact with them, just staying up to date on all of our uh, social media stuff, saying, you know, we're still out here. We're still doing our thing. We're still working on music for y'all. We'll be uh, having an online uh, merch store that'll be popping up soon here in the next week or two. And, uh, you know, just honestly, the virtual tip jar when we're when we're playing our live streams or, or anything like that, uh, whether it's Venmo, PayPal or uh, Cash App, something like that. That's uh, that's really going to be the, the best way. And I know, you know, I know it's tough for a lot of people 
too out there and we're not the only ones suffering so like i understand but really just just if you can't can't donate anything just come watch hop online and watch us facebook live uh every thursday night at 8 p.m we're out there damon curtis music I couldn't see tonight I couldn't get you off my mind Couldn't run you out of my dreams Couldn't find a place to hide or buy some seed I couldn't close my eyes When I did, I saw your face Damon Curtis and his band will be performing on Facebook Live Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. And Damon will be doing solo acts on his Instagram, so be on the lookout for that. And you can find them at Damon Curtis Music. And be on the lookout for their new album. They're expecting to release it this summer. Up next on the show, staying indoors doesn't mean you have to miss out on benefits from the sun. How you can go solar safely while keeping up your social distancing. You're watching SA Live. We're all social distancing and spending most, if not all of our times at home these days, but that doesn't mean you can't let the sunshine in. South Texas Solar Systems can do your whole solar install and check on your system without ever entering your home. Vice President of Sales, Dan Moran, is on the line to tell us how and to tell us about a big giveaway. Hey there, Dan. Hey, how are you? How you doing? Hey, look at you <laughs> all there at home, all right? Yeah. So how do you do an install without any direct contact? Well, um, basically, it's all a turnkey operation. I mean, from the start, I mean, the, uh, everything we do is basically all that red tape we, we talked about in the past. That's all done by our operations, our finance uh, office. So basically, no contact whatsoever. Everything's done through the city, through, through CPS or any electrical company. So uh, just keeping that, that distance away is going to be um, good right now. So you've mentioned some of the steps you're taking to keep your customers safe. What other steps are, are being implied? Well, you know, like the, the directions of our leaders, our mayor uh, to keep social distancing. Well, we are doing the same thing, keeping our customers safe, feeling safe. So, you know, everything we're doing by remote with the same technology like we're talking with right now. So uh, we're using telephone calls, video chat. So keeping that distance, making sure they're comfortable with that. Even when we do have to uh, go to the home, our guys are going to be just up on their rooftops. They're going to be either putting ground mounts. Uh, and then also practicing that safe uh, social distancing. So they're going to be uh, well taken care of the customers. OK, let's talk some tech right now. What are okay. power walls? Power walls, uh, those are battery storage. And, uh, you know, just like to add, energy is an essential part of life. So those power walls can actually save and store that energy. So if the grid were to go out, which means your power uh, uh, company, well, you would have stored power to keep you going. So that right now is very important to have. Um, so power walls uh, by Tesla are one of our biggest, biggest products right now that we're moving. Uh, they have a great, great warranty. South Texas Solar Systems is also Tesla certified. So please, please give us a call if you'd like to have that. Now, money is tight for most folks right now. Is there a tax credit for going solar? 
Yes, there is. There's a 26% tax credit, which will help uh, cut a big part of that, that cost off. But I'd like to add just one thing. This is one investment that right now you would feel greatly at, at purchasing because you know this is going to do well really good for your home, especially with times like this. So yes, the, the tax credit is available. Uh, um, so, and then we are also putting in our own incentives. So please give us a call. And there's more good news. You have a big giveaway going on right now. What can folks enter to win? So we're giving away a three kilowatt solar system, which is going to play a big, big, huge part in taking a large chunk off your, your electric bill. So please enter to win. Now, when do you announce the winner? Great question. We're going to announce that April 29th. All right. So you want to enter to win a three kilowatt solar system right now on salive.com. Your home must qualify for you to win. For more information on South Texas solar systems, just call 210-405-8628 or visit their website, txsolarsystems.com. And don't forget to follow them on social media. Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you. You guys play it safe out there. Tomorrow on SA Live, I put together a list of food trucks I visited in the past to find out where you can get some delicious meals to go tomorrow. And if you're working hard from home, we'll help your little ones play hard. We'll be showing off toys that can keep your child entertained and happy. That's all tomorrow at 1 on SA Live. All right. Welcome back to SA Live. We asked you earlier, what are some weird food combinations that you're putting together? And John says, hey, my friends, I like to use Irish butter instead of oil for eggs, <laughs> toast, and even on pork steaks when cooking them. That sounds normal. I like that. <laughs> you were thinking about Mike's thing earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Vicky says, I have made homemade stir fried chicken and broccoli with orange sauce and sweet and sour sauce. Vicky. I know, Vicky. Hey, life right her house. here's a life hack. Get it from McDonald's. You get the packs right there, right? There you go. All right, Manuel says, not new, but it's an old school fave. Weenie flautas, crispy hot dogs, corn tortilla wrapped weenie with cheese. Oh my gosh. Yes. Absolutely delicious. All right. Well, unfortunately, we weren't able to completely air that story about a Texas distillery making hand sanitizer for first responders. Now, we're going to air that package in its entirety this Friday, so be sure to watch. Yeah, I mean, what a great thing for them to be doing, right? right. I mean, this is, that's such a cool thing. And of course, you want to make sure you can patron them and get some other of their products as well, not just the hand sanitizer. What a great show, though. So many things from the food to getting scared a little bit. Mm -hmm. So and finding out that Mike Oster <laughs> likes peanut butter, mayo, and what was it? Was it onions? onions. And onions. And onions. On a sandwich. Who would have guessed it, you guys? It stands but, alone. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us today. And, of course, Dave and Curtis is going to play us out with a song off of his album, Texas and You. Stay safe and have a great Wednesday.